Hello and welcome to part 7 of my series where I try to uh, re-implement Pong in the Bevy game engine. Uh, last time we implemented resizing and I mean it's not quite optimal but it's good enough for now and today I am going to attempt to add walls at the top and bottom and implement uh, at least some kind of score count. So one thing I noticed is um, I haven't pulled through with the uh, refactoring completely. So the spawn ball function should probably be added to the ball um, module. We can add a spawn method to the ball, I guess. Maybe there's even a trade for that let's let's maybe take a look at some point spread components let's take a look at the documentation and look for spawn um, we are using the commands to spawn something spawn method requires a dynamic bundle We've seen that last time. How did this actually work? So in our so our ball is in the width part. Yeah, but I mean, I think this is probably the right place to put it. So, let's put this here. Maybe not inside of the ball, uh, ball implementation for uh, itself. Maybe lower down. Somewhere like here. Not, I don't... I do not want to introduce a local variable, but I will need to make this public, otherwise it cannot be imported here. Now let's do the same thing to spawn paddle and really clean our main method up. Declare it public, import the commands as soon as our IDE lets it. Let, let, let's me do that. And the collider. Okay, right, just like that. And that should be it. And it still needs to be imported. This takes quite a long time. Is it taking such a long time? Now it's working. Okay, let's commit that. Pull out spawn ball and spawn paddle methods. Not methods, functions. Just like that. Next up, we we kind of need the the walls at the top and the bottom. 
way it works right now we we have to manually update these uh, the positions of these um, during the window resize but for now let's just call them let's just make a, a, a wall module and uh, let's create a wall struct Is it a wall though? Uh, a struct though? Maybe not. I mean we need a top and a bottom wall. So let's use an enum. Top, bottom. Let's see, the scoring walls are also... Hmm. I mean the walls that calculate the score. I'm not sure if they need to be the same kind of wall, but for now let's just do it like this. So we have our wall and we need the spawn wall method. So how did we spawn the paddles again? Yeah, we just used some random coordinates. I mean, we can do the same, it doesn't matter, because it it receives an update event anyways. So we are spawning the wall with mutable commands. It doesn't need to be mutable. This um, commands spawn how did I do it with the paddles? I, I might have had to spawn both of them. Spawn paddle. But how did I spawn both of them? Yeah, I spawned them manually. Maybe I should create a spawn paddles method. that one imported and remove this one I mean we can already commit it but then we need to check that it actually works after that so let's add this Let's add, add the new spawn calls. Also, we only need to spawn one of them. I only call it once because there is no right and left player um, anymore that has to be passed in there. Add the method itself. Um, add spawn paddles helper that spawns both paddles like this. Now let's stash and check if it still works. Still compiling quite slowly. Okay, it works. Let's pop the stash 
and continue with the walls. So commands dot so fn spawn walls with commands like this and we call spawn wall with an actual wall argument I guess wall wall like that wall with sprite components like that um, I don't care about mesh and material for now main cast draw render pipelines transform we need a sprite and a transform and the rest of it is just the default spawn wall wall top maybe I shouldn't call it wall I should call it like ceiling and floor whatever like that that the trade dynamic bundle is not implemented for wall that's because we're doing it the wrong way around we need to spawn the sprite components with the wall component like that and not the type but doing it like this now this should work we have our setup we spawn the walls did I not make it public yes I did not make it public and now the IDE allows us to import it so for now this will just not produce anything useful because everything is set as default values but actually that shouldn't really matter which means you <laughs> I could actually just write spread components default in here and what I need to do now is provide an update method like here update after window resize like this info wall update after window resize I don't need a self reference but I need to I need a window event size and and translation so like that have width and height the width is the resize event dot width as f32 
and the height is the same just with the height instead of the width like that and what we want is actually a size um, I mean how big was the paddle paddle width 20 let's just copy this for now and call it thickness so um, the size is vec to new in the x direction we want the entire window width and in the y direction we want the actual thickness of the wall like this and for the translation we get a vec3 new of in the x axis it's zero it's centered so zero dot zero and in the y direction it's the window height divided by two minus the thickness divided uh, divided by 2 which is the same as window height minus thickness and taking all that divided by 2 like this and have a comma and 0, zero for the z axis and I forgot an equal sign for the assignment and that should be it for the wall at first oh also we need a um, collider component the wall has sprite components wall and a collider because it, it should bounce like the ball should bounce off the wall and since our collision system where is it where is it hmm interesting maybe it's part of the paddle paddle movement system collision ball collision system oh it's part of the ball so if the ball is not hmm. if the ball collides with something that has a collider transform and sprite so our wall has sprite components so it has all that so it should just work without any extra effort because the system is already set up for it all we need to do is now to actually spawn the walls which we already did so let's check it out oh and we forgot to call the update function so let's stop the compilation for now so for let's just copy that Sprite transform and yeah, like that. Paddles is renamed to walls, and this is now a wall that 
does not need to be mutable because the walls do not change by themselves only their other components are changing actually I was thinking about maybe isolating the speed component from the ball and the, and the wall there's a speed here and a direction and the paddle has a speed I'm not sure uh, but actually no I, I cannot separate that because there are, they are two distinct things you, I cannot make one system that works on both of them because this speed relates to um, pressing a button and what happens when a button is pressed and the ball speed just happens on on every frame at least I'm assuming that it's on every frame not quite entirely sure um, it, it's at least uh, on every frame maybe more so let's call the correct method We don't care about the wall. And this is the wall's iterator. Yeah, maybe we should still take the wall as a parameter just to make sure that we get get to it past and like this even though we don't actually use it. Like this. So what's the problem right now? One argument to many because we do not want a player in here which also means we need to remove that parameter and we need to remove the player over here and I'll run it and it bounces but I cannot see the bottom wall. Something is wrong here. Where is the bottom wall? Oh. Oh. It seems to bounce against some against the wall immediately or something like that. So depending on if it's a top or a bottom wall, we need to do different things when we update the position. So let the, what's, what is it called? The Y position, let's say, be dependent on self so we do actually need the self reference here let y offset equals this number here and we calculate it once top one has the normal y position and the bottom one has the exact opposite of it position now we have the y position and I have been using the wrong variable name or actually actually the wrong name of the variable binding not an actual variable it 
forgot some semitones here. Now it should probably work, except it doesn't because of a typo. Like, just like that. And now in theory we should have one wall at the top and one at the bottom and it should bounce. So we can now actually start... Oh, what was that? Why is it going through my paddle? Oh no, it's... What? What? Why is it not colliding? Maybe I need to make some hitboxes or something like that. I mean, good enough for now. I guess we we can create the um, the other walls. Let's call them goals, not walls. And um, after that, um, implement everything um, to make sure it it behaves properly when uh, the paddle actually hits the ball, or the ball hits the paddle. So let's commit at top and bottom walls and now let's add the goals. The goals are an enum, also let's not call it goals but goals singular. Do you let me rename that? Won't you? Come on. Refactor rename. Thank you. Just like that. We have a goal that is either left or right, which actually means we don't need it to be an enum, we just need it to be a struct because left and right are already a player component. So, pub fn spawn goals using mutable, uh, mutable reference to commands. I mean, the commands are also something that I should take a look at. Because I will probably need them for more complex um, logic. Spawn, despawn. Insert. Entity. What's the difference between spawn and insert? Entity components. Spawn is just components. Oh, so. So actually, um, it's just a different syntax for spawn dot with insert one insert resource add command so let's see what a command actually is command is a word mutation which means actually you can write code that does mutate the world uh, 
And what is the world? An unordered collection of entities, each having any number of distinctly typed components. Similar to hash map of entity to vec of box of dynamic any, where each vec never contains the two of the same type, but far more efficient to traverse. So what can we do with it? We can create one, we can spawn entities. We can spawn a batch, we can despawn, we can reserve space in it. Clear contains query. Yeah, not, not quite sure um, what to make of the commands for now. I mean, I can take a look at the examples. I would have, th uh, would have thought that I can put things like there, like a command to increase the score or something like that. Maybe. But otherwise that would be an event in, in my book. Maybe a command is something to perform on a frame or something like that. Let's just ignore that for now. We can just modify the score in place and we do not even have a score yet. <clears throat> So in let's call it spawn goal. With the commands and player left. And the same with the right player, like this. And this method doesn't exist yet. So let's create it. Commands.spawn. The um, some sprite components again. Let's use the defaults because of the resize event. And with a goal component and with our player component. Like this. So let's actually spawn them. Spawn goals. Like that. And we also need our update method. Copy pasting for now. In this case, we actually do not need, need our self -ref reference, but who cares? those two. The size is flipped. We want the thickness in the x direction and the window height in the y direction. Then the Y offset is the window width 
minus thickness divided by two and the y position it, it's actually an x offset and x position and we do not match self but we match the player let's take a look at the paddle uh, update method again it's the third parameter the one after the window resize event so player player just to to keep it consistent actually i mean did I pass the player? No, I, I actually copied the player in. I mean, the player doesn't keep any... I mean, I, I do not need a reference to something that is only one byte big, because then the reference would be eight bytes, and that's just not worth it. It doesn't make any sense. Although I'm, I'm quite curious if the compiler is able to optimize that, if it sees a... If it sees a copy type that is smaller than the actual reference, if it will just dereference and copy the type over. I need to check that la uh, out later on on Com Compiler Explorer. Or how Matt Godbolt doesn't want me to call it on Godbolt. So, the Y position is zero, it's centered there, but the X position is our new X position which is quite funny because it sounds like exposition in terms of exposing something. And that's the wrong method. We actually want to modify our, modify our goal method, not this one. So let's do that again. We have our player We have the x offset, the x position, match the player, left, use player, star, asterisk. It's actually, in German you say a uh, stern, which is, which would be a star, but it's not called like that in English. Another query in our resize listener. We have a sprite, a transform, and a goal. And we do have a player. should already be quite good. I mean, it should at least bounce. Or no, it shouldn't bounce because we haven't made it a collider yet. Yes, we do want to dereference it. Thank you, compiler. Unused variable, not the offset. We want the position. Thank you again, compiler. Oh, that 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 looks horrible. So let's. Let's also change the position of the paddle slightly. 
So we just increase the margin to 50. It should not bounce from the walls. Also, the paddles are still going out of the, the visible screen area. Why is it going through there? Let's first implement the, the score. I'm not sure what to do first. The score um, score display or what? Let's do the display first because we, then we can check out how to get um, text on the screen. And before that, let's um, slightly simplify paddle and ball, uh, go, uh, paddle and ball placement. Um, let's rephrase that. <clears throat> so, when spawning the walls, we are already using default components. For the ball, we can do, do the same, because we just re-adding those We'll just be re-adding those values anyways. Actually, I can just implement default. Oh, this is actually implementing default for the ball. I was talking about this. So the sprite components, let's use the, the default ones like that. Same for the paddles. Sprite components, default. It's going to be changed later. <clears throat> that seems to work. Interesting. Yeah, of course the size is not required anymore. Because it's calculated. Same here. That. Compile it again. Okay, looks good. So remove redundant. Start positioning from ball and paddle, just like that. So now we are trying to paint text or write text on there. So let's take a look at UI text and UI UI. Next, and UI. Let's first take a visual look. So, how did I run this, the examples again? Even though I made a, I made an issue about that, a, a GitHub issue. I didn't really remember. Cargo run. Is, is that it? Minus minus example. Text.
That takes a quite a uh, quick while to compile. Interesting. Maybe I should take a look at the um, features in the meantime. I mean, um, the the cargo features. So what do we have? Audio dynamic plugin. So, yes, you can actually. Uh, remove features from the library if you don't need to use it. Interesting. Okay, so that's the text example. Let's check out the, the UI example. And also having this frame counter might actually be interesting for, for our use case as well. Great. So how does it work? Frame time diagnostics plugin, we already have that, I think. Right here. Text update system with the diagnostics that are accessed, the frame time di diagnostics, and text. So the text component is actually a text bundle and a 2D camera. We already have a 2D camera, I guess. Do we? Yes. Right here. And actually, what did the spawn method take again? Where is it? Here. Dynamic bundle. Again. Okay. So we have a text bundle that has a style. <clears throat> text, a font. I'm curious if there is a like a default font. I mean, we'll see, uh, see about that. Let's take a look. Text components UI entity. Interesting. What is a node? I don't know. We have a style position type, relative or absolute, direction, flex direction, align items, center sounds like what we're looking for, align self, We have the actual text, which does implement default. Let's take a look at the default font. It's derived, so what is the default font? There is no default font, but there is a default handle. Interesting. I mean, we will find out if it works or not. <laughs> Let's
let's just um, recreate the uh, text example. Let's just make a score module. Now I'm kind of curious how, how, or I'm wondering how should this be done? Do we have a global score component? No, score resource that is accessed? Or do we have a per player score? And then probably the left player's goal is the right one on the screen. And if that collides, we only need the player component. And actually, if the player, no, that would be a separate score component that only has one score. But then again, um, we cannot print it. So the score actually needs to be uh, a resource because we we need to ensure that there are only two scores otherwise we cannot print it properly on the uh, on the screen or display it properly on the screen so the score is left u size and right u size not that you would ever reach that higher number but hey um i mean we could make it 8 bit like it probably was on the original although maybe i mean it's the first video game maybe they didn't even have 8 bit back then on that like i'm not sure if you can even call it a computer in any case um spawn for text do we still need a an additional component for that i mean we need to update the text once the score actually changes so how do we do that we need some kind of marker for the score so maybe let's call the score values or score res ah. oh yeah, actually, we can just use this as a component. Not quite sure if this is 100% correct. Oh, no, it's not. Is a handle usable as a component? Does a resource have a handle? No. Pub scoreboard. Pub struct score board. Let's just call it that. And then this is the marker um, component for the score itself. Um, commands. And this is now called spawn scoreboard. Like that. And we. commands dot spawn text components and in there let's just do some text um we have a style and a text. 
So at the defaults first, style is align self flex end. Not sure what that means, whatever. Style. The difference between style and text style. Font size and color. Well, whatever. It's it's over here uh, where the text is. Let's use the default style for now. We can change this later if we need to. And this means we can just leave this out entirely. And we only need the text. Like that. That's not what I wanted you to do. I only wanted the inside of the text to be filled in. Whatever. Um, value is a string. We don't care about the font for now and we want a text style. Well, you let's say zero zero the two string and text style style text style Line, no alignment. Nope. The color, the default color was probably white, I guess. Yep. text style that's not it that's what we saw earlier font size let's let's take the same size 60 same as the example that comma because it's incorrect and take a look at the text components again style maybe line self center maybe line self I think it this doesn't work if there's a comma.
don't put that there. There, 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 sh there must not be a comma here, but it al always puts a comma there. Why? Oh, that's why. Okay. So now let's see how that looks. So just a non-flexible, never-changing scoreboard for now. And you can't see anything at all because of why line self flex and let's just take that for now and just copy it in here and see what happens. Does need of a font. <clears throat> and they actually use not text components but a text bundle. Great, but there's no text bundle. Maybe they made their own bundle? No. Where is the text bundle coming from? UI source entity text bundle. Let's let's use the prelude here. Use bevy prelude star or asterisk and see what happens. Still no still no text bundle. There is no text bundle.
no text here. What if I do not spawn the walls and go? <coughs> so maybe it does have to do with the asset server. Just going to copy it over. Copied them here. Let's open the let's create a new directory assets new subdirectory fonts and move the fonts in there okay like that and where do we get the asset server from over here it's a resource where do we get this resource from it's just just comes out of nowhere probably from the default plugins so our setup method needs to get the resource as that server is a resource of an asset server like this maybe it's not the correct resource Whatever. take the asset server as a parameter and now we are going to find out what's wrong with that and actually it seems like nothing is wrong with that it's just the IDE that's slow to respond still no text inside anywhere increase the font size a little bit no doesn't seem to work what am I doing wrong?
That doesn't seem to be the issue. Text update system. We do not actually want to change it, so hell no. Default plugins, frame time diagnostic plugin. Camera UI bundle. We do have a camera UI bundle. We. Oh. Oh, no, yeah, we have the default plugins, we have the camera UI. Camera 2D components. It's not a camera UI bundle. looking at this seems kind of outdated am I completely off track here oh yeah I was on the master branch I guess in some way and that has changed um so i actually need to look at the um version 3 examples and then i get the correct type names so ui camera components like that and that should do the trick Okay, we now have FPS, but not a score. Which is probably because of the font. Where, where, where did the font come from? From the text. This and there. Oh, <laughs> it's on the left over here. Style align self center. There should be more alignment possibilities. Text components. And there's aligned self, there's aligned items and aligned content. No idea what all of these mean. Let's, let's take a look at align content. What that does. There's nothing. Align items. I mean, if that doesn't work, I probably need to take a look at uh, how UI works, like the UI, UI example. 
next time. Also, maybe there's some other way I need to position it. Oh, there's a position. So display position type, relative or absolute. And there is a position. What is val? Okay. Testify content. I mean, I mean, I probably have to postpone this for now. Let's take a look at the Fira Sans font and its license. So we know what we need to do to use it. License, open font license. You can use them freely in your products and projects, print or digital, commercial or otherwise. However, you can't sell the fonts on their own. But what, what are the actual requirements? Let's take a look at what Bevy has done. License. It's just a regular MIT license here. Yeah, for now I, I just put it in there and um, off camera I'm going to do some research and on uh, the licensing requirements and add that just in the repository before I put it on GitHub. Actually, maybe I want to use the, the medium, the, the mono version. Fira. Fire mono medium. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe bold um, sense bold was the right thing to do. And for the score. We don't need that struct yet. For now, we only need this part. What? I thought I could commit this. Maybe in this view? Nope. They might have changed it, so I need to actually use a different tool this time. In this case, NeoWim. Using the Git Fugitive plugin, I can now only commit part of it. If you wonder why this looks so strange because it's I'm um, uh, because I'm running it in the oh didn't want to paste here because I'm using it in the EDE IDE um, terminal. So right now this is confused. So this is not committed, it should 
not trigger any weird um, compiler warnings. So initial text uh, text display of dummy score like that stash check it if it still compiles and if the compiler warnings are gone and they are not gone move this compile again scoreboard is the only dead code for now so let's what is happening that's better Okay, let's amend that commit. Pop the stash again. Use this version. And this file can actually be deleted. Also, I, I made that mistake, fire bolt. Fire sense bolt. Committed again or amended again. Um, just be sure to uh, be careful when, when you do git amend. Because otherwise you could, you, you, you might um, need a force push if you have already pushed the branch and that can be bad if somebody else is using it. Also I want the scoreboard component in there. So let's amend again. Now it works. Whatever. Still check that check that it still compiles. And it uh, it does. So that's it for this video. I hope um, next time I will be able to um, make the actual text appear where it should be and implement the score and at that point we do have an initial working version of the game itself so goodbye for now and see you in the next video